In this video, we'll review the Ferris wheel and how we can use the sine and cosine functions to find the height of the rider and the rider's shadow position. Keep in mind from our work in class that sine is used to measure the height of the rider as he or she turns around the ride, and cosine is used to measure the position of the rider's shadow if the sun is directly above the rider, which means the shadow would be directly below. We'll call that the high noon shadow. Now let's look at a link to make this a little bit more clear. Bear with me while this loads. Okay, in this diagram, we have the uh, Ferris wheel on the left-hand side and the rider's um, sine equation or height equation to the uh, right. So if we start the rider on the extreme right-hand position of the Ferris wheel, the purple dot on the left, and we look at its graph on the right, they'll show how the rider's height changes as the rider revolves around the Ferris wheel. So when they start at the extreme right-hand side, their height is at the center of the Ferris wheel. As they rotate in a counterclockwise direction, they go to the top of the Ferris wheel. This will correspond to the maximum height that the rider ever achieves. Revolving to the extreme left-hand side, their height is back to being at the center. Revolving to the bottom of the Ferris wheel, their height is at the minimum. And then back to where they started on the right-hand side, back to where the height is center. So the sine or the height equation will go from center to max to center to min to center, provided that the rider starts on the extreme right-hand side and rotates in a counterclockwise direction. Now for the shadow, we'll use cosine. If we start on the extreme right-hand side, the shadow is to the far right, which means that it's at maximum value. So the cosine graph here is going to start at max. As the rider revolves into the top of the Ferris wheel, the shadow is actually going to be at the center. It's directly below the center of the Ferris wheel. So we've gone from the maximum value to the center value. Revolving around to the extreme left-hand side, this is the furthest to the left the shadow will ever go. This corresponds to the minimum. Revolving further to the bottom, the shadow is back to center, and then eventually back to where we started at its maximum value when the rider is on the right-hand side. So for cosine, or the high noon shadow, it goes from max to center to min to center to max. In order to write an equation for the rider's height or shadow position, we're going to need to know some other information about the Ferris wheel first. We'll need to know the center height, the radius, and the angular speed. To find the angular speed, we're going to need to know how long it takes to complete a full revolution, which we'll call the period. The angular speed, or b, can be found by using 360 degrees divided by the period, or 2 pi divided by period, depending on whether we want it in degrees, which is the one on the left, or radians, which is the one on the right. Now for the rider's height equation, we'll call that h of t, we can find that equation by taking the center height plus the radius sine of the angular speed times time. The angular speed times time is going to develop the angle of revolution. Or we can think of it as h of t equals k plus r sine bt, where k is the center height, vertical shift, r is the radius, sine, and then b, angular speed times time. Now for the high noon shadow, the shadow doesn't have that same center height. The shadow is always on the ground. So in this case, there is no k value. So the shadow's equation, s of t, shadow's position based on time, is going to be the radius times cosine, because we want to measure the horizontal component, of angular speed times time. Or s of t equals r cosine bt. Sine is for the rider's height, and cosine is for the high noon shadow provided that the rider starts on the extreme right-hand side. Here's an example of how we're going to work this out now. Here's a Ferris wheel that has a radius of 28 feet, a center height of 30 feet, and turns a full revolution in a counterclockwise direction every 40 seconds. Now, if we assume time is going to start on the extreme right-hand position, or standard position, let's start by finding the angular speed, in this case in degrees. We'll say that b equals 360 degrees, divided by the 4 seconds it takes to revolve around the Ferris wheel. That means the angular speed is 9 degrees per second. For the height equation, h of t, it's going to be the center, which is 30 feet, plus the radius, 28 feet, sine of bt, which in this case is 9t. The shadow's equation is going to be s of t equals the 28 cosine of 9t. Again, the shadow always is on the ground, so there's no extra 30 feet added to it. Now we're going to find the rider's height and shadow position 16 seconds into the ride. 
For h of 16, we're going to substitute 16 in for t. This means h of 16 equals 30 plus 28 sine of 9 times 16, which is 144 degrees. I need to write that step because I actually want to see what the angle of revolution actually is. In this case, 144 degrees. Now I'm going to need my calculator to find what the value is. I'm going to approximate it. I'm going to make sure my calculator is in degree mode because it says 144 degrees. So I push mode and make sure it's in degrees. So typing this in, 30 plus 28 sine 144, and I'll push enter. And I find that the height is about 46.46 feet. For the shadow position, I'm going to use my other function. So s of 16 equals 28 cosine 9 times 16. Or s of 16 is 28 cosine of 144 degrees. Taking my calculator and typing 28 cosine 144, and then I push enter. And I get that it's negative 22.65 feet. Now that negative is not just it's not wrong. It just means that I'm to the left of center. Anything for shadows that is negative just means to the left of center. Now it says h of 16, it really should be s of 16. So the shadow's position is going to be 22.65 feet to the left of center. Now let's look at another example. Here we've got a radius of 35 meters, a center height of 40 meters, and turns a full revolution every 90 seconds. So here, b equals the 2 pi over 90, or pi over 45 radians per second. The height is going to be 40, that's the center, plus the radius, sine, of our pi over 45t. And the shadow, s of t, is going to be that 35 cosine pi over 45t. Now for the writer's height in 27 seconds, we're going to go and substitute 27 over t. So h of 27 is the 40 plus 35 sine pi over 45 times 27. Now I'd like to re go ahead and reduce 27 40 fifths. If I divide my top and bottom by 9, I get that it's h of 27 is 40 plus 35 sine 3 pi over 5. So the angle of revolution in this case in radians is 3 pi over 5. Now I've got to change the mode of my calculator to radians, so I push mode radians, and then I type it in. 40 plus 35 sine, parentheses, 3 pi divided by 5, and close the parentheses, and hit enter. And the height is going to be about 73.29 meters. For the shadow's position, I'm going to use my s of t function and substitute the 25 in. So 35 cosine, pi over 45 times 27, we already know is going to be 3 pi over 5. So I'm going to type it in, 35, cosine, parentheses, 3 pi divided by 5, and hit enter. And again, it's going to come out to be negative, in this case, negative 10.81 meters, which means the writer's shadow is 10.81 meters to the left of center. Now let's try another example. This time, I'd like for you to try this. Pause the video, work it out, and then resume the video when you're ready to check your answers. I'll give you a moment. All right, hopefully you've had a chance to work this out. Now, hopefully you also caught that it's the diameter that's 38 meters, not the radius. If the diameter is 38 meters, the radius is half of that. So the radius is only going to be 19 meters. All right, beginning with the angular speed or the frequency, we're going to take in radians, 2 pi, and divide by 60 seconds to go around. It did a half revolution in 30 seconds, which means it does a full revolution in 60 seconds. So b is actually going to be just pi over 30 radians per second. For the height, h of t, we're going to get that the center height is 21, plus the radius, which we said was only going to be 19, sine pi over 30t. And the shadow's position, s of t, is 19 cosine pi over 30t. The writer's height in 48 seconds, h of 48, is going to be 21 plus 19 sine pi over 30 times 48. Now 48 thirtieths will reduce, it becomes 8 pi over 5. That's the angle of revolution. Alright, typing this in. 21 plus 19 sine, 8 pi over 5, making sure I'm in radians, turns out to be about 2.93 yards. They're towards the bottom of the ride. The shadow position, s of 48, is going to be 19 cosine. The pi over 30 times 48, which becomes 19 cosine 8 pi over 5, which is 5.87 yards. That means to the right of center. So they're in quadrant 4. They're 5.87 yards to the right and only 2.93 yards up.
Now here's another example. In this case, I got something a little different. You notice it's in red. They're gonna turn clockwise. The Ferris wheel has a radius of 15 meters, center height of 19 meters, but it turns a full revolution clockwise every 30 seconds. So because it's going clockwise, it just means it's going in the other direction. It's making a negative angle. So instead of saying it can go two pi in 30 seconds, we're gonna say it goes negative two pi in 30 seconds. It just means the angle of revolution is gonna be negative. So to begin with, the B value or the frequency is gonna be negative two pi over 30, or negative pi over 15 radians per second. The height equation would be h of t. The center height is 19 plus 15 sine negative pi over 15 t. The height of the high noon shadow now is s of t. That's going to be the 15 cosine negative pi over 15 t. Now you may have heard in class that cosine is an even function. The cosine of a negative angle equals the cosine of a positive angle. So really, for the shadow equation, we could also say cos 15 cosine pi over 15 t and it'll work. Now, sine is not an even function, so that's not going to work with sines. For sine, we'd have to set it up as, uh, you could also say it's an odd function, which means you could say it's 19 minus 15 sine pi over 15 t. For an odd function, the sine of a negative angle is the negative sine value. Or you can set it up like this, and then you'll never make it wrong. Just, if it's going in the opposite direction, just make the angle negative. All right, finding the writer's height and shadow position in 28 seconds. We'll substitute in 28, and we're going to see what we get. 19 plus 15 sine, negative pi over 15 times 28 seconds. 28 fifteens will reduce. Honestly, it doesn't reduce. It becomes negative 28 pi over 15. Sorry. In which case, now we just type it in the calculator and see what we get. And it turns out that the height is going to be about 25.10 meters. Go ahead and try the shadow position, and then resume the video when you got it. I'll wait a second. All right, for the shadow's position, we're going to say that it's 15 cosine the negative 28 pi over 15. That means its shadow position is going to be 13.70 yards. Now it's positive, that just means it's to the right of center. All right, let's try one more example. Here, we're given a function, h of t equals 38 plus 20 sine 36t, and this is used to describe the writer's height um, in feet t seconds after passing the furthest right-hand point. We're going to describe what the three values tell us about the Ferris wheel. So think about it for a moment. What does the 38 represent? What does the 20 represent? And what does the 36 represent? All about the Ferris wheel in context. Now we know that the height equation should be center plus radius sine of the angle. This tells us that the center height is going to be that 38. So we know that the center is 38 feet. The 20 is the radius, so the radius of our Ferris wheel is 20 feet. And the 36 tells us that the rider will turn 36 degrees per second. Now, but what does that mean about the Ferris wheel? Normally we're not told degrees per second, we're told the time it takes to go around. So we know that we can do 360 degrees for a full revolution based on the time, but we can get 30, and that'll be the frequency. Now, if we divide this, we can rewrite and say 360 divided by b equals the time. Well, we know b above was the 36 degrees per second, so 360 divided by 36 is going to tell me the time for one full period, which means this Ferris wheel takes 10 seconds to go around. So from this equation, we know that the center height is 38, the radius is 20 feet. It takes 10 seconds to go around, which is why it's 36 degrees per second. All right, thank you for watching this video, and hopefully it helps you understand how to work with the Ferris wheel with sine and cosine.